So by 1180, Kiyomori has just become delirious with power. And there are several theories for this. Uh, some people, some historians believe that he had actually began, he suffered from illness, mental illness. He became mentally ill in the later part of his life. Um, and so this started to impact his political decisions that he would make. He becomes very power hungry, paranoid, suspicious of everything and everyone. People all over the country were arrested and executed without any crimes committed. You know, he would just be suspicious and say, arrest all these people, etc. So everybody, especially in Kyoto, the aristocrats hated Kiyomori and the Taira. The imperial family, who used to be so close with them, couldn't stand them anymore. Um, the only thing, the only problem with that was the reigning emperor, Antoku, is the grandson of Kiyomori. Okay, so, you know, he's fine with his grandpa, and, you know, but the other imperial princes, including Goshirakawa, didn't care for Taira, right? But nothing can be done. Well, something can be done because by Yoritomo, right, the, the Minamoto-san. In 1180, he officially starts a rebellion against the Taira clan from Kamakura. He says, I'm rebelling against this government. I will take power back to the Minamoto. And if there's anybody here in the country who wants to get rid of the Taira, join me and we will overthrow them together. So in 1180, you have another civil war between the Taira and the Minamoto clans. And the Minamoto learned their lesson from before. They said, we have to be a little more politically savvy. We can't just go fight and, you know, destroy things. So we are going to get support. So what the Minamoto do, and this is all Yoritomo's idea, by the way, right? The older brother. He starts gathering support from warrior clans in eastern Japan. And the reason he picks eastern Japan is because not only is this where Yoritomo is located. Remember, he's in Kamakura, which is in that region. Um, so that's where he has a lot of connections. This is also where the Minamoto clan hailed from, eastern Japan. So there's a lot of old familial ties and you know, connections here that he can utilize. He also gets the help of the Buddhist temples. Okay, there's a lot of monks there, especially the Tendai temples. They're called warrior monks, where they're monks, but they're also trained in the military arts. So you know, he gets all their help. And Kiyomori gets a little nervous, actually. Uh, and that's why in 1180, he does something quite unthinkable. He actually moves the capital from Kyoto to the city of Fukuhara, which it's basically now known as Kobe. You've probably heard of the city of Kobe. He moves to Fukuhara because he wants to abandon Kyoto and get away from the Minamoto. He felt that Fukuhara was a safer place, and he didn't like Kyoto much anyway because of the aristocrats, so he said, let's move to Fukuhara and get away from the Minamoto. So this is where the master manipulator, the retired emperor Goshirakawa, comes into play. And remember, under Kiyomori, even though he's still the grandfather of the emperor, he has no power left. He says, you know what, I'm going to support the Minamoto. Anybody's going to be better than the Taira. Kiyomori becomes furious when he hears about this. So Goshirakawa is put under house arrest. And even though uh, the Taira had moved to the capital to Fukuhara, Goshirakawa had stayed behind in Kyoto. Well, Kiyomori wants him to be under his watch, so he forces him to move to Fukuhara with the rest of the Taira family. And he also forces the aristocrats to move Kyoto, from Kyoto to Fukuhara, because he wants them under his watch as well. So if you're an aristocrat, you're not going to be happy about having to move your, from your beautiful estate and from your beautiful city of Kyoto, where you've lived for generations, for this new city founded by somebody you hate. So in 1180, right after the capital was moved from Kyoto to Fukuhara, there was severe famine and disease in the city of Kyoto. A plague almost. And people believe that it was the kami who were <clears throat> punishing them because they were angry at Kiyomori for moving the capital and, and making the imperial family upset. Because remember, the only person who can move a capital is the imperial family. Kiyomori is not the imperial family. So they believe that it was punishment, retribution from the gods for moving the capital. And, uh, you know, there was such devastation. The move to Fukuhara never really was even happened. It was just constant problems, one after the other. And so just after a few weeks, Kiyomori moved the capital back to Kyoto. 
And he said, you know what? If, if you, we're not going to live in Fukuhara, nobody's going to have it. So he completely dismantles Fukuhara and burns the city to the ground before he moves the capital back to Kyoto after just a few weeks. And this is really the beginning of the end for Kiyomori because moving to Fukuhara, moving the capital was his dream. And the fact that it, it, it ended on such a bad note really devastates him. Another big event of this civil war, it's called the Genpei War of 1180 to 1185. The, another major issue was in 1180, Todaiji Temple in Nara joins the Minamoto side. This is a huge deal because Todaiji is the national center of Japanese Buddhism, right? The Taira retaliate, attack the temple, and burn it to the ground. And the temple itself burns. The great Buddha is damaged. It's not burned completely, but it's, it's damaged significantly. For the Taira family to do this was a huge, huge deal. And it was actually Taira's son who, who, who did this, who was in charge of the attack on Todaiji. And other anti-Taira temples in Nara, like Kofukuji Temple, which was the Fujiwara's family temple for generations, and even temples in Kyoto were also burned to the ground. Whoever joined the Minamoto, whether it was in Nara or Kyoto, were burned to the ground. And the Japanese people were horrified at what the Taira did because now you're attacking religious institutions. And this was just, it, it took it too far. And so more and more people hate the Taira and are starting to support the Minamoto against them because anybody's going to be better than the, than the Taira, right? And aristocrats especially who once sneered at the Minamoto, they looked down on them. Now they're supporting them because they're sick and tired of the Taira. The turning point of the Genpei War happened in 1181. Kiyomori dies suddenly. He's already very old. Um, he had been delirious and, and, and having issues physical and mental for, for a year. And when he died, they say that he, was, he had to be put in a bathtub because he was sweating so profusely from this fever he was suffering from. And, you know, there's many artwork created that show that this fever was really Kiyomori being punished for his sins by the gods. And you can see in this picture how he's being tormented by them on his deathbed um, as a result of all the evil things that he did. So Kiyomori dies. And uh, the Taira clan is succeeded by Kiyomori's son, Taira no Munemori. And Munemori was, out of all of Kiyomori's children, was the most incompetent one because he was born in Kyoto. He was raised as an aristocrat. He had no idea about anything military or warrior, he had no knowledge of how to fight a war against the Minamoto, right? And even politically speaking, he was very inept, okay? On the other hand, the Minamoto had two people, two brothers at the helm. Yoritomo was a military, a brilliant military strategist. He's the one who would devise all the political stuff, and he would devise the battles on paper. So Yoritomo stayed behind in Kamakura and would design the military strategy and the political strategy. Who are we going to ask for help? How are we going to win this battle? How is this terrain suited for our military techniques, etc.? His younger brother, Yoshitsune, was the general. So Yoshitsune would be sent out to do the actual fighting on the field. So the Taira could not really keep up because they had no idea what they were doing, whereas the Minamoto had both the political clout and the military genius to fight a war. So starting in 1183, the Minamoto say, you know what, we are going to march to Kyoto. It's time to take over the capital. So they've captured a lot of territory in northern and eastern Japan. It's all under the Minamoto grasp. And in 1183, they conquer the city of Kyoto. Okay, Goshirakawa was rescued. He was taken out of house arrest, and he was, he was okay. And what happens now that Kyoto is conquered? The Taira family escape. So what they do is they pick up their whole family, they also take the emperor, Antoku. Remember, the emperor was the grandson of Kiyomori, right? So Kiyomori's daughter's son. So he's their family member too. So they actually take Emperor Antoku, who's still a child, and they escape by sea to the western provinces. And remember, the western provinces are their traditional base. It's where the Taira were originated from. That's where they're most comfortable. So they actually escape Kyoto, now that Kyoto has been conquered by the Minamoto. They escape... And instead of letting them go back there, the Minamoto say, nope, we're going to follow them until we crush every single one of them. So the Minamoto follow them to the western provinces to crush them. 
And this is a picture of the Taira clan escaping Kyoto and evacuating Kyoto in 18, 1183 uh, ahead of the Minamoto for invasion. And that's Emperor Antoku, you can see. And this is also a picture of the Taira evacuating the city, escaping the Minamoto forces. So we have a little bit of a dilemma here, because Emperor Antoku was taken by the Taira, right? Or the Heike, that's their other name. So who's going to be the emperor? Because, you know, Minamoto don't want to have to rely on an emperor who's half Taira, right? So because Emperor Antoku was taken away, they needed to pick a new emperor, who particularly a, 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 one of the siblings of Emperor Antoku, one of his younger brothers, who doesn't have a Taira mother, okay? The important part is that the new emperor has the father's imperial blood on the father's side, but the mom's side, the mom can be anybody. She can be Fujiwara, she can be Minamoto, she can be whatever, but she can't be Taira. We don't want to deal with the Taira anymore. So they needed to pick one of Antoku's siblings to be the new emperor, now that Antoku is being taken by the Taira. So what the Minamoto do is they install the previous emperor Antoku's half-brother, Prince Gotoba, as the new emperor. And Gotoba was even younger than Antoku. He was, he was a toddler, but he became the new emperor. He was retired emperor Goshirakawa's other grandson. Okay, so he and Antoku had the same father, the late emperor Takakura, but the mothers were different. Antoku's mom was the Taira princess, but Prince Gotoba, the new emperor's mother, was a Fujiwara princess, so she had no relation to Taira. The important part of this is that the dynasty, the imperial family, is able to continue because they're able to put a new emperor on the throne who has the same father. In other words, they have the same imperial blood flowing through their veins, but there's no relation to the Taira on the mother's side. So you're able to get rid of the Taira influence, the Taira blood in the imperial family, and get back to how things used to be with a father being an emperor and a mom being a Fujiwara. So the uh, battles continue throughout 1184 and 1185. Um, the Taira keep losing. Okay, there's, they just, every single battle they lose. And again, it's because Munemori, the new leader of the Taira, he was born in Kyoto. He had no idea how to fight. He was out of touch with his warrior side. He didn't know what he was doing. And on the other hand, the Minamoto had been honing their skills for years, trying to prepare for the day when they would get revenge against the Taira. So they were very, very powerful. And the final battle was in 1185, the naval battle of Dan no Ura. And uh, Dan no Ura was in, you know, it was, it's a region in near Hiroshima, so western Japan. This is the site where Yoshitsune and the Minamoto army completely crushed the Taira clan. And it was the end, the final battle. And when the Taira were defeated, they knew that they would be taken in by the Minamoto. And in order to honor themselves, they said it's more honorable to commit suicide than to fall into the hands of the enemy. So Kiyomori's widow, the late Kiyomori's wife, took her grandson, the ex-emperor Antoku, in her arms, and they jumped into the ocean to their deaths. Okay. And all the Taira women, her daughters-in-law, followed her um, and killed themselves. Kiyomori's sons committed suicide. Um, one of them did, actually. The heir, Munemori, who was the leader, he was actually captured by the Minamoto. He tried to commit suicide, but he couldn't do it. He jumped into the water, and then he got scared. So he was captured by Yoshitsune, by the Minamoto. He was eventually executed by the Minamoto. And the youngest son, who had led the expedition against Todaiji Temple, initially the Minamoto were going to execute him too. But the Todaiji warrior monk said, nope, bring him to Nara. We're going to try him here for his crimes against the temple. So he was taken to Todaiji Temple and he was executed there by the monks in Nara in, in, in 1185 because of the fact that he had burned the temple down. So the Taira did not survive. The entire family was crushed. And they no longer existed. And actually it's interesting because if you go to Dan no Ura, it's, it's, it's on the beach, it's a beach area. This was a naval battle, it took place in the ocean. But if you go on the beach of Dan no Ura, 
you see this very distinctive style crab. It's called heike crabs. Remember, heike is another term for taira. Look at the shell. It looks like a human face, right? So le local legend states that these heike crabs um, contain the spirits of the taira warriors who all drowned in the sea at that fateful battle in 1185. And you can, interesting thing is you can only find these crabs here in this region. You can't find them anywhere else in the world. So it's a very bizarre phenomenon. So by 1185, after the end of the Genpei War, the Taira clan is no more, has been completely eliminated and defeated by the Minamoto, namely by Yoritomo, and who's now the clan head of the Minamoto, succeeding his father. Yoshitomo, who was executed by Taira in 1159, and his younger brother, Yoshitsune. Okay? So the two brothers, the Minamoto clan heads, have defeated the Taira. And retired Emperor Goshirakawa is thrilled that the hated Taira are out of the picture, and he was secretly happy because he believes that he could manipulate the Minamoto into getting power back for him and also for his grandson, the young Emperor Gotoba. Okay? So he tells his grandson, you know what? We're going to get power for ourselves one day, soon. I'll get the Minamoto to do it. Um, so even then, after all that happened, Goshiraka was still plotting behind the scenes. But here's the kicker is that the Minamoto clan didn't plan to give the imperial family or the aristocrats any power back. In fact, they felt that the Taira had, had retained too many aspects of that old aristocratic culture. What we'll see in the next unit is that the Minamoto are actually planning to create a whole new system of government. Okay, they, they, they think the Taira didn't do enough to create a new Japan. They're going to do it themselves. So in 1185, the Heian period ends. And where are we at? Well, we have the Minamoto warrior clan completely defeating the Taira. And now the Minamoto are in charge of the government. Okay? So we still, of course, have an imperial family. The emperor Gotoba and his grandfather, the retired emperor, maintain their position as emperor. Okay, so no one can touch that. They're still divine gods. But now the person behind the scenes controlling them is Minamoto no Yoritomo. So we have a new chieftain in the background. Okay? But the Minamoto want to make sure, keep the imperial family as symbolic. They don't want them to have any power because their plan is to change Japan from an aristocratic society, which we saw in the Heian period, to a completely samurai-centered warrior society. And that's why the samurai period is officially born at the end of the Heian period in 1185, thanks to the Minamoto. So we'll see what happens next week with that. But to sort of recap, I want you to define the following key terms. The retired Emperor Goshirakawa, the Emperor Antoku, who was Minamoto no Yoshitsune, who was the Hojo clan, and what was Fukuhara. So you could press pause and think about this for a moment. <clears throat> 